this video, I'm going to show you how to make this giant effect in Photoshop. So the only two things you really need for this are a background image that has somewhere that you can actually place your giant object or person or puppy or whatever you're going to use. So I'm going to use a baby in this case to place that giant thing within an image that is going to represent odd scale. So a bridge and these people and cars we know are usually bigger than a baby. In this case, the baby is way bigger than the bridge. All right, so once you have your images, the first thing you're going to do is cut out your giant object. So to do that, we're going to go to the fourth tool down over here, the quick selection tool, and then go up to right here, select subject, and Photoshop's going to do a good job of selecting your subject. Uh, I'm not going to be too worried about this. It looks pretty good. But if you have something like, let's say, I'm going to go to the plus here. If you have something kind of jutting out like this that is not supposed to be part of the selection, then just go to minus and you can change your brush size here if you need to. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and I'm just going to use the minus to paint away the parts that I don't need. So to get it back to the selection that I want. But if you accidentally take away too much like this, then go back to the plus and add it back in. I'm not gonna be super concerned like down here. Um, just get it kind of close to what you need and then go up here to select and mask. In select and mask, we're just gonna deal with a few things. So in terms of hair up here, uh, you can see that it's kind of rigid, right? Like it's too sharp of edges. So you can use this if you want. You can use this second one down, refine edge brush tool. And by using that one, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, I think, and bring my hardness down quite a bit and if you paint over hair it just helps especially the edges of hair like this it helps soften out those strands so it's not you know such a, a rigid kind of edge even the side of the face there, I probably shouldn't have done that one uh, you know you just paint along the edge of your hair and it'll actually help soften that up to make the selection of hair be a little bit better even if you get rid of a chunk like this we can fix that after as well Okay, so once you've dealt with your hair, then we're just going to go over here and I'm going to smooth mine out quite a bit, maybe to about there, then feather it just a touch, like less than one pixel, and I'm going to shift my edge back just a bit here like this. Then I'm going to go down to output two and change selection to layer mask and click OK. Now you can see here that this is the part that we've kind of lost in terms of the hair. So if we look at our mask here, white is what we have left and black is what we've covered up or got rid of with the mask. So I'm going to go back to a brush and change it to a white brush and then change my brush size and hardness. So I'm going to go hardness around, you know, 80% and my size, I'm going to make, you know, a little bit bigger, somewhere around like this. And I'm just going to paint back in some of that hair that we lost with refine edge. Bring that kind of back. Anything else that you need to bring back, use a white brush and anything you need to erase, use a black brush. So I have a little indent there. I'll zoom in like this and you can see those little patches right there. So I would bring my brush down, maybe even the hardness down and just kind of go through and paint out these. I would take a little bit longer than what I'm doing here. Obviously I'm trying to go quick, just go all the way around and kind of smooth out and fix any of the things that don't look right. Okay, so once you have your selection the way that you want it, then go up to your move tool up here, just click on your subject and drag it over to the background image, drag it in and then let go. At this point, we're ready to resize and position our object. So for me, what's interesting about these two pictures is the sun is coming from like up here, I think, like we look at the shadows here of the car, it's pretty close to being straight above, but it's maybe slanted this way a little bit because this shadow is poking out here. So it's kind of from this side a little bit. But for this one, the light from the window or whatever was coming from this side, this is a little bit brighter. So we can do one of two things. If you have an object like mine, like this baby, it doesn't matter which way I have the baby facing. So I can go up to edit, transform and go flip horizontal and nobody would have a clue if this that this is backwards because there's no like writing on the shirt or you know anything distinguishable that if you flip it it looks odd so if you have something like that you can flip it because i think this looks better with the light coming from this side 
If you don't, if you have an image that you can't do that with, then I'm gonna show you a little trick later that you can do to kind of darken this side a little bit and then brighten this side to kind of balance it out so it looks more real. Okay, so now I'm just going to actually do those steps properly. So I'm gonna go edit, transform, and flip horizontal to get the baby facing the right way that I want. And then I'm gonna go control T and just make sure that this chain thing is clicked in, like don't have it like this, click it in. Cause now when you scale anything, it's gonna preserve the aspect ratio. Otherwise, if you have it unchecked, then you're gonna be like squishing and squashing stuff and you don't want that. So I'm gonna undo that and then check it. Okay, so I'm gonna get it the size that I want. So probably about like that, something like there. I wanna be able to see that car over here just slightly. So I'm gonna kind of place it right there. If you need to rotate it, go out to the corner here and rotate if you need to. And when you're good, then just click check up here. The next thing we're gonna do is just add our shadows. So to do that, we are gonna go over to our regular layer here, our object layer. You're gonna double click to the right and then just click right here, drop shadow. Click on the word, not the box. So over here, it'll check the box, but click on the word so you can get this menu that pops up. And then really all you're looking for for this one is to kind of blur it out a little bit, bring the size in, you know, have something like this where it's just a little bit of blur along the edge of your, your subject and try the opacity probably uh, all the way up and then click okay, it doesn't really matter, but click okay. And then all we're gonna use this one for is if you notice that if anybody, anybody who's touching the ground, so I'm gonna zoom way in here Anybody who's touching the ground as they're like walking, running, there's like a darker spot of shadow right where they touch. And then there's kind of the, the you know, dispersed shadow that kind of goes out after that. So there's like a dark spot and then it's dispersed. Same with the car, right? Like right under the car is darker and then there's the other part of the shadow. So we're gonna break that up into two parts here. This is gonna be what we use for the, the dark part, okay? So all we're gonna do is on this drop shadow now, so right click on it and go create layer and that'll make its own layer here. Then you're gonna click on the thumbnail part of it and just use your arrow keys to kind of nudge it down kind of into place. So when we're really just looking for this kind of bottom area right here. Anything that's kind of under, we're gonna erase everything else that's up top here. Okay, so I'm gonna place it in there and I know the shadow should be coming from this side a little bit. So I'm gonna nudge mine to the left a bit and probably place it about, you know, right there. Okay, then on this layer, once you're still clicked on it, you can go over to your eraser and make sure it's a pretty large eraser with the hardness right down and you're just gonna get rid of, oh, make sure your opacity is all the way up as well and erase everything that's up here because we don't need any of that and then we don't need anything over here. Erase everything that's on this side. If, if your light is from this side, then erase the shadows on this side because there wouldn't be any. I'm actually gonna erase, uh, you know what, I'm gonna leave a little bit of that in there right now and I'm just gonna go around here and take away the side and kind of curve it around like that. Now to fill in the rest of the contact shadow, I'm just gonna go take a look at the original image and we can see that there's some right here. There's some, whoops, I just painted on that one. There's some extra shadow right there. There's some on the other side of the leg right here. And there's a little bit that kind of juts out right there. So back over here, I'm gonna make sure I'm on that layer still. I'm gonna use a brush. I'm gonna make sure my opacity is right up. And I'm gonna make it a fairly large brush so I can get a nice kind of curve around here and drop my hardness right down. So I'm gonna start with this one and I'm just gonna kind of paint in that extra little bit like that. And that's to match kind of this jut out right there. Then I'm gonna go over to here and try and get that little edge. So I'll probably bring my size down a bit there. And I wanna kind of paint in like that kind of shadow there. It's a little bit more harsh than what was here, but it might be because this is sunnier outside. So it might show up a little bit more harsh. Maybe I could have made my brush, you know, a little bit bigger or, you know, drop the opacity down. So it it kind of tapers a little bit more like that. And then I got to deal with kind of down here. I'm just going to add, you know, a little bit in terms of the contact right there. And in this case, even though it wasn't kind of over here, I think because of the way this is, I think I'd have to add maybe a little bit more kind of in there. 
All right, so once you're done your contact shadow, next is to work on the kind of distinguishable shadow. So in this case, there's this kind of one that's, you know, it's not as strong, but it kind of juts out from the wrist and kind of goes out this way. So it might not be exactly the same on this, but I'm gonna kind of just copy it over here. So to do that, we're gonna add a new layer. So now we have an extra one here, and I'm gonna drop my opacity down to about 50%, make sure my brush is fairly large. I'm going to keep it as a like blurry, like no hardness down here. And I'm just going to kind of paint out from the wrist and kind of around like that. Okay. So I'm trying to kind of match what kind of this shadow was right there. And I kind of like that. It looks okay. And then I'm just going to drop the opacity maybe a little bit so it's not as strong. So just maybe something like that. And if I look back again, I don't see any other kind of you know, distinguishable shadows that are sticking out. So I'm gonna do what I call the kind of spill shadow. So that's kind of gonna be in front here. So I'm gonna add a new layer and I'm just gonna really drop the opacity down quite a bit now to maybe like 20% and keep the brush fairly large. And I'm just going to kind of paint in the front right here, just really kind of quick. And I might have to do it again, you know, something like that, that the, the shadow here, it wouldn't be just like, it wouldn't just end, it kind of would spill over a little bit, right? So you can also adjust your, you know, opacity there if you want, so that was without it. And you can kind of just slowly kind of creep it up until you get kind of what you like, maybe about right there, maybe a little bit more like that. Okay, and then the last shadow for this one is gonna be kind of the dispersed shadow over here. So if we zoom in, we can see that over here, all of these, even the car, there's a little bit of a very slight shadow that's kind of going off to the side here. You can see it with the runners over here. So I'm gonna kind of recreate that off to the side over here for this one. So again, we're gonna add a new layer and then on there, I'm just gonna make sure that my brush is still large. My hardness is gonna be right down and opacity around 20, like pretty low. And I'm just gonna kind of paint in this direction. So just making a little bit of an angled shadow like that. So if I look, that's without it, that's with it. Maybe it's a little bit too harsh, so I might have to drop the opacity again to get what I want. So maybe something like that. I just want a very slight shadow that kind of comes off to the side over here that kind of matches what is happening in the rest of the image. Once you're done with all of your shadows, just click on the top shadow, hold shift, click on the bottom shadow, and then I'd say just put them in a folder. So it's gonna be a group and call this shadows. Next, we're gonna deal with the kind of subject side of the shadows. So you can't just put the shadows on the ground. You also have to impact the subject as well. So the perfect example would be kind of the inside of this leg would be much darker than it is. It looks still kind of weird like this. Kind of the bottom part of this foot would be darker. You know, already on this image, you can see that this was kind of the highlight side because the window in the original one was shining on this side. And this is kind of the, the dark side. So we're gonna kind of recreate that or enhance that a little bit more in this image. So to do that, click on your subject layer and then go down to this little half circle adjustment layers and add a levels adjustment layer. And on that one, you don't want to just start messing with this because it's gonna impact the entire image. What you wanna do is click on this thing right here, which is to create a clipping mask, or you can right click and go create clipping mask. And what that means is whatever we apply here is now only gonna affect the layer that is right below it. So now if I slide this along, you can see it's only gonna impact the baby, okay? So I'm gonna play around with this, but really just paying attention to this bottom edge right here for what I want the shadows on the subject to look like. So I'm probably gonna increase some of the darks here, like darken some of the darks. I'm going to probably, yeah, also adjust some of the midtones to be darker. I'm going to, no, I'm gonna maybe do that. Okay, so darken that a little bit. So you're kind of playing around to get what you want this leg and underneath the feet and stuff to look like, maybe even a little bit darker. I'm gonna go even darker, maybe something like that, okay? so might be pretty harsh in there. Okay, then you're gonna click on the mask bar right here and go Control I to invert it. So then it's basically just gone. And then all we're gonna do is with a brush, make sure it's white in the foreground 
and you know adjust your size and hardness as needed along with your opacity. I'm going to start with just 100 so you can see with a fairly large brush and the hardness right down. And you're just going to paint along the edges where you have those shadows. And what you're going to notice is it's going to reveal underneath. So as we're painting white on here, it's going to reveal whatever we did to this levels adjustment layer. Okay, so that's kind of revealing that underneath. I'm going to do some on this foot, maybe a little bit down here, a little bit on the bottom there, you know, maybe some of that in here, you know, some I'm just doing this really quick, you should probably, you know, adjust your size and opacity and stuff. I'm gonna maybe I'll just do that. I'll drop one down to like 35. So I might even want to do that kind of on this side of the hand, you know, on this you know, side maybe enhance a little bit more here. Even though it's already dark, I'm just kind of showing you that you can kind of darken that side even more. And then just like we did with the other shadows, you can adjust the opacity as needed as well. So you can take it all the way away or just, you know, slide it up to what you think looks pretty good. So I'm just going to go, you know, somewhere around like that. And you can do the exact same thing for your highlights as well. So I would just add a, another levels adjustment make sure it's clipped as well. So a clipping mask to this one and you would, you know, make it brighter. So I'm just going to kind of crank that up, you know, increase some of this and then do the same thing. Click on it, control I to invert it and then just use a white brush to paint in the spots that are going to be highlighted. So maybe the sun might hit, you know, the top of this leg a little bit, the hand, maybe a little bit over here, you know, this side of the face, whatever you need to be kind of the brighter spots. Now you're just gonna, you know, paint that in over top of here to reveal it on this adjustment layer here, which is our highlights. Okay, so now that we're done our shadows, we're gonna move on to matching the color of our subject to our image, because most likely whatever your subject is, is gonna have a different lighting and color than the background image. So to do that, we're just gonna click on our subject layer again, and this time we're gonna add a curves adjustment layer right here. And if you clicked on your subject and added it, then it's gonna already be clipped. It's gonna be a clipping mask right to this one. If it's not like this, then just make sure you click on this to add it, or again, right click and go to, this would be create clipping mask. I'll release it, it would look like this. I've actually released all of mine right now, so I'm gonna clip that one put this one back and put that one back. Okay, and then while you're clicked on this part, like not on the mask part of the curves adjustment, on the actual like logo like icon here, you're gonna go up here to these three color pickers. This top one with the black tip is for your shadows, this one's for your mid-tones, and this one's for your highlights with the white tip down there. And when we click on them, you're gonna see up here, you need to change this to either like the sample size, either three by three average or five by five average. And then you're just gonna, you're just gonna go over here to the shadows one and double click, which will bring up your color picker. And it's gonna say target shadow color. So with this picker, you're gonna pick kind of the darkest kind of shadow part of the background image, not this image of your background image. So I'm gonna click this kind of shadow where the car is right there and click okay. This thing, save the new target colors as defaults. Just click yes. Now, when you're done this project, you might have to go in and reset these to, which would be black, gray, and white. But for now, we're gonna use these ones. So click yes. Then you're gonna go to the next one here. The Actually, let's go to the highlights next. And you're gonna double click, same thing. And now you're gonna use the picker to pick a bright spot. So I'm gonna pick right over here and click okay. Then again, yes. Then you're gonna to go to your mid-tones, and this one is maybe a little bit trickier. You gotta find something that would be, if this was a black and white image, what would be gray. So I'm just gonna pick kind of somewhere down here on the street right here. This would be kind of a mid, you know, and it shows up somewhere in here, that's probably a, a good pick. And then click OK, and then yes again. And then now we're actually gonna pick from our main image here. So we're gonna go back to the shadows, and you want to, I'm gonna zoom in a bit here, and you're gonna pick a, the dark like part of the new image. So I'm gonna actually pick this kind of shadow in here, boom, and you can see that it's gonna adjust kind of right away, and it's gonna to adjust to the shadows to match what these shadows were. Okay, then I'm gonna to go to the highlights and do the same thing. I'm gonna pick kind of a bright spot, so this is maybe my most bright spot right there. Click on that, 
it's going to adjust it again. And then for mid-tones, it's supposed to be, again, you're going to pick something that is a neutral, like gray tone if this was black and white but I'm not having any success with this image. Watch when I click, which would be kind of maybe right there, it turns it a crazy wonky color. So something is off with my midtones. So I'm just gonna undo it and just do the dark one again and my highlights right there. And then because that didn't work completely, I might still adjust this a little bit more. So to do that, I'm just gonna go in here and add a color balance. And just with my mid-tones, I think I'm just gonna slide it a little bit towards cyan to kinda just eyeball match it with the image a little bit better. Next, we're gonna create some depth of field to both the background image and to our subject right here. So let's start with the background layer. So I'm gonna click on it and just put a mask on it. So this box with the little circle in it, just click on that, it puts on a mask. And then on the mask, we're gonna go over to our gradient tool. So right here, gradient tool go up and click right up here. I already have mine kind of set here. So yours probably looks more like this where it's just one black box, one white box. So leave the black one here, click on this one and then click right here, change it to black, click on a new spot right here, just anywhere in here, click on that box, click here and change that one to white. And then just slide this like for mine, I know that I need pretty much all of this in focus. Really, I might blur out a little bit down here. Then this kind of range where the, the baby's sitting, I need this all to be in focus across here. And then it's gonna get more blurry as I go back here. So most of my image in the front is gonna be white. I'm gonna have this as a pretty strong white. And then it's gonna gradually get blurry because whatever is white here, this is what's gonna be in focus. And whatever is black is gonna be blurry. So I might even change this one because there's just such like a short little gap here. I might even change this one to being, you know, a little bit more gray instead of black, because that'll be not quite as blurry, okay? So then when you have your kind of map set, click OK, and I'm just gonna zoom out so I can get a little more space. Then you're just gonna click where you want it to start, and I'm gonna drag this out and go like that, and you're gonna see kind of the effects. Whatever is checkered is gonna be blurry and whatever is in focus here is going to be in focus. So I think I have this pretty close. I may be going to extend it a little bit more. So I have a little bit more in focus here, uh, you know, maybe like that. So a little bit of trial and error until you get kind of the look that you want. So for me, maybe something like that. The only issue that I have is up here. I have, this is going to be blurry because the, the gradient is very two dimensional and my image is three dimensional looking, right? So I actually need this to be in focus as well because it's actually in the same plane of distance away from the camera as the baby. I'm not gonna fix all of that right now, but all you'd have to do is click on your mask and whatever you paint with white is gonna be in focus. So if I could go along here and paint all of this kind of stuff back into focus here, like even the car over here, I could go in and paint all of this to make sure it's all in focus as well, but I don't wanna keep changing my brush size and going through all these little posts here. So I'm just gonna leave it like this for now so you can see what the effect is, okay? So once you have your gradient set, click back on the thumbnail side of your image here, of the background layer, go up to filter, blur, and then down to lens blur. When lens blur opens up, you're gonna get a kind of a preview of what the effect on the background is gonna look like. You can see it's blurry back here. This is my plane of focus and I have a slight blur in the front right here. If yours doesn't look right, then just slide this blur focus distance, blur focal distance along to kind of change where, like right now I've changed it to that. Now this is in focus back there. So you can kind of change where the focal kind of plane is. And then in radius is kind of how blurry it is. So. I can crank this to 100 and make it really blurry, like a shallow depth of field, or I can go all the way to the left and make it so it's kind of the original image and nothing has happened. So for me, I'm gonna put mine around like, you know, 40, 40 to 50, somewhere in there, and I'm not gonna to touch anything else, click OK. Now, it's gonna look like kind of nothing happened because you still have to go and click on your mask here, right click, and then disable the layer mask, and that will apply the effect. As for the subject, we're gonna apply a different blur effect. So I'm gonna click back on that layer. And this time I'm gonna go up to filter, 
go to Blur Gallery and choose Field Blur. And this one is an interesting effect because wherever you, you're gonna take this first dot here and place it, I'm gonna place it on one of the eyes right there. And then over here for Field Blur, I'm gonna put that at zero. It's gonna be not blurry at all. And then all you're gonna do is add new points. So in this case, I might want, this is a little bit further in front, like the hand and the knee. So I'm gonna put another one there and I'm gonna only make that like maybe like a five for blurriness. I'm gonna click on the other eye and put that down to zero. I might, you know, go over here and just make sure that's also zero. Maybe, you know, up here, make sure that's zero. I might make the foot right here also a five because it's kind of sticking out like that. So you're kind of just placing little uh, dots and then, you know, this one I'm gonna make maybe a two or a three because it might be a little bit in front of where this was maybe the shoulder back here, again, a two or a three, something like that. So you're just placing dots to make sure that you know what you want to be in focus by putting this at zero and you know sliding this up to make whatever you want blurry. So maybe even kind of the top of the head here, I might make that a two or a three as well because it might be a little bit blurry back there. Okay, when you're good, then just click okay and it'll apply that effect to your subject. All right, so the final thing we're gonna do is apply a global effect to the entire project to kinda make it match a little bit more and to kinda just grade it, make it look a little more interesting. So to do that, just go to your top layer right here and go down to your little half circle here, image adjustments, and you can pick any of these to you know do something with, but we're just gonna do a simple one, look at color lookup right here, and this little drop down at the top just provides some basic kind of looks to it. So let's just say I click on drop blues. That's gonna drop the blues out of everything. That's everything that's underneath it right here. That's why I we went to the top layer. And that'll make the you know reds, greens, yellows kind of pop a little bit more because there's no more blues in this image. So just go through here and pick something that you like. Let's just try a couple of those. Let's try fall colors. So that gives kind of a cool look to it. And then once you have one that you like, then I would suggest going here to blend modes and trying some of these out to see if there's something here that makes it look, you know, even better or, you know, different, gives it a kind of a, a cool look to it. So, so for this one, I might pick, you know, soft light that looks okay. So you can see it that's without it and that's with the color lookup right there. And then you can also adjust just like anything else, the opacity, or in this case, like the intensity of the effect, you know, you can bring it right down. So it's nothing or just slide it along to give kind of the effect that you want. And you can add as many of these as you want. So we can also go in here and, you know, add something else or even another color lookup to kind of mess with the image even more to get it the way that you want. And that's it. That's how you create a giant effect in Photoshop. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.